It was well past midnight when Emily, a dedicated nurse at Fairview Hospital, found herself alone on the night shift. Most of the patients were resting peacefully, and the once bustling corridors were now eerily quiet. Emily had always been unfazed by the late hours, finding comfort in the rhythmic hum of medical equipment. But tonight was different. Tonight, she would encounter something that would forever change her perception of the hospital. As Emily made her rounds, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. She glanced over her shoulder multiple times, but each time she turned, there was nothing but the dim glow of the flickering lights. Trying to dispel her unease, she chalked it up to the exhaustion of the long shift. With her heart pounding in her chest, Emily approached Ward 13, a section of the hospital that was rarely used. The heavy metal door creaked as she pushed it open, revealing a long, dimly lit corridor. A chill ran down her spine as she stepped inside, feeling a strange sensation, as if the air was charged with an otherworldly presence. As she walked down the corridor, the sound of her footsteps seemed to echo louder and louder. She quickened her pace, desperate to finish her duties in this unsettling part of the hospital. As she passed one of the rooms, she caught a glimpse of a figure standing in the shadows. It was a silhouette, indistinct and hazy, but the mere sight of it sent shivers down her spine. Hello? Is someone there? Emily called out, her voice quivering. There was no response, and the figure seemed to vanish into thin air. She tried to convince herself that it was just her imagination playing tricks, but the feeling of being watched intensified. Her hands trembled as she continued her rounds, trying to stay focused on her tasks. As she entered one of the patient rooms, the door slammed shut behind her with a loud bang. Emily jumped, her heart racing as she tried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Panic set in as she realised she was trapped. Help! Somebody please help me! She cried out, pounding on the door. But her calls for help went unanswered. The walls seemed to close in on her, and the room felt suffocating. She turned to face the patient's bed, only to find an elderly man lying there, his eyes wide open, staring at her. I can't leave this place, he whispered, his voice barely audible. What do you mean? We'll find a way out together, Emily replied, trying to keep her voice steady. You don't understand. None of us can leave. We're trapped here forever, the old man said, his voice filled with sorrow. As Emily tried to comprehend the man's words, the room around her began to change. The walls seemed to bleed, and the air was filled with a foul stench. Ghostly figures materialised around her, their eyes hollow and filled with anguish. These are the lost souls of Ward 13, the old man explained. We all stayed late and now we can never leave. This hospital consumes those who linger too long. Terrified, Emily realised that the hospital had a dark secret and she had unknowingly stumbled into its clutches. She could feel the malevolent presence in every corner, feeding off the fear and despair of the trapped souls. Determined not to become one of them, Emily mustered all her strength and fought against the paralyzing fear. She closed her eyes and focused on the memory of her family, her friends, and the life she still had to live. Slowly, the apparitions began to fade away, and the room returned to its normal state. When Emily opened her eyes, she found herself back in the corridor. The door to the patient's room was wide open, and she could see the familiar lights of the hospital ahead. With tears in her eyes, she ran towards the exit, vowing never to stay late in that hospital again. From that night on, Emily never spoke of her harrowing experience. Some may say it was just a figment of her imagination, a result of exhaustion and stress. But Emily knew the truth. She had come face to face with the haunted souls of Ward 13, and the memory of that night would haunt her for the rest of her life.